Many thanks to Pandemonium, Fellow Tracks from Melinda Servers, Atlas, One Original Daisy Servers, Clash from Melinda Servers, Sheriff Lion, Sauerkraut, Sergeant Pepper's Daisy Invasion Server, PTZ Servers, Chinese Cream Vanilla Servers, Tequila, and CF Tools Cloud for making this video possible. Weapons of Daisy become broken and useless extremely quickly, with attachments becoming ruined even faster than this. So in this we're going to go over exactly what destroys our weapons and attachments in the game, learn the strange trick to double the amount you can repair with weapon cleaning kits, take a look at how many shots it takes to ruin every single weapon and suppressor in the game, and explain a method to almost quadruple how many shots your suppressor can last. After a lot of testing, the exact formula Daisy uses to destroy our weapons has been discovered with the same formula working for suppressors and compensators too, using several hidden stats found on ammo, weapons and even attachments. To make this as basic as possible, all ammo types have a barrel damage stat that is used to damage a weapon or attachment on a weapon every single time that that weapon is fired. Inversely, weapons and some attachments have a barrel armor stat that determines how much each weapon and attachment resists this barrel damage coming from the ammo type, a lot like how armor reduces health damage for example in DayZ. The complete discovered formula looks like this, outputting the damage a weapon and attachment takes per shot. So if we plug the Mosin into this formula, the 762 by 54 rounds that fired by the Mosin does 500 barrel damage, while the Mosin has a barrel armor stat of 2, giving us 250. This number is then divided by the total durability of the Mosin, which is also 250, giving us a total 1 damage per shot. So the Mosin takes 1 durability damage per shot, which means it can be fired 250 times from 100% pristine to ruined, because it has 250 total durability. Doing the same for the LAR and the Longhorn, which both if you use the same ammo type, we can see how differently total durability and barrel armor dictates how quickly a weapon degrades. As you can see here, the LAR 397, where the Longhorn can be fired 160, even though they fire the same ammo type. This formula is the only formula that I could find used in damaging a weapon in DayZ. Which fire mode you have selected, whether your weapon is overheating currently, how many times you chamber, cock, or reload your weapon doesn't damage your weapon or attachments in any way. I can see the numbers in the game. They are not affected by any action other than firing. So it appears to be only the ammo used versus the weapon or attachment used multiplied by the number of shots fired determines how much damage your weapon or attachment would take over time. So while the blaze double shot does technically do double durability damage, it only does double durability damage because two shots or double the amount of shots were fired and would take the same total damage if these shots were fired separately instead. This is also the case for buckshot 2. 8 pellets does not mean 8 times this formula. This formula will only be triggered once with the buckshot as firing a slug does the exact same damage to the 133 in this case due to them having the same barrel damage stat, same barrel armor, and the same durability, you get the same result. But due to rubber shells having slightly lower barrel damage stat, it does slightly less damage per shot. This proves that 8 pellets do not trigger this formula more than once. This formula is simple yet effective, so likely won't change in the future, but I can imagine some barrel damage and barrel armor stats will change, as a flare gun can currently be fired 7,200 times before it becomes ruined, which pushes the rest of the stats to the left. But these numbers here, they show exactly how many shots each weapon can be fired from pristine to ruined. So I've called this stat the shots to ruined stat now on the website. Only a few attachments in DayZ take damage from being used or when attached to a weapon that's being fired, which are the only attachments that have the barrel armor stat on them. This includes all suppressors and compensators in the game with no other attachment taking damage when attached to a weapon that's being fired, not handguards, not bayonets, and not magazines. Compensators can be plugged into the exact damage formula that we used earlier, spitting out the number of shots it takes to ruin the Mosin and SG5 compensators here. As for the four suppressors in DayZ, Due to the several ammo types that can pass through the suppressors and therefore damage them when they're attached to a weapon, the amount of shots each can take before ruining is solely determined by the ammo used, not the weapon. Let me say that again, the ammo used determines how much damage a suppressor will take. This means if you use an AK-101 with those 5.56 rounds with a suppressor, it's going to do 250 barrel damage to the 101 and the suppressor, whereas the AKM firing the 7.62 by 39 rounds is going to do double the amount of damage to the suppressor and the weapon. So you can half your damage to your weapon and your suppressor by using the 101 instead. 
and without sacrificing too many stats either, these weapons are fairly balanced when it comes to RPM and damage. So these weapons are not going to be very different from each other and yet the 101 will do half the amount of damage to your weapon and half the amount of damage to your suppressor making the AK-101 at least with a suppressor attached far superior than the AKM. Again these values are on the website on the attachment info tool select the suppressor and it will show you the number of shots for each quality level for each of the weapons that the suppressor can be attached to. If you've got a sharp eye you may have noticed that the durability of suppressors is ridiculously low maybe you've known this for a while making for the lowest durability items in the game. In just a few punches you can ruin these from pristine with the improvised suppressor being destroyed in just one punch from 100% or shooting them while they're attached to a weapon or if an infected or a gunshot hits you when it's inside one of your pieces of clothing it can ruin it in just one hit. For this reason always place them inside a container inside your inventory while storing as items two levels deep cannot take damage but if you can't do that keep it attached to your weapon as it's unlikely someone's going to shoot your suppressor. I'm guessing the durability of suppressors has to be this low in order to work with the formula mentioned earlier so the suppressors do work with the exact same durability damage formula for compensators and for weapons as well so it's unlikely the fragility of suppressors will change in the future as I'm guessing these need to have a very low durability in order to work with this formula. All weapons and most attachments can be repaired with the weapon cleaning kit consuming 25% per use doesn't matter what it's used on it's 25% and at a minimum restoring one quality level on any item that you repair. However, no weapon or weapon attachment can be repaired above the worn quality level, so worn is max. Soft skill in either direction doesn't matter. It doesn't increase or decrease the amount that you're going to repair. It's 25% of the kit in exchange for the next quality level, which can be taken advantage of if you're clever to almost double the effectiveness of this weapon cleaning kit. Using the SVD as an example, at exactly damaged, the SVD has 125 durability out of 250 50, as you can see here and if we repair it it will jump to the next quality level which is worn at 175 durability. However it doesn't matter where the durability value is in the damaged quality level it could be right at the top of the damaged quality level it could be right at the bottom it could be one shot away from becoming badly damaged and if you use a repair kit it will still restore it to the worn quality level which is still 175 durability because you repaired it while it was damaged it gets bumped up to the next durability level which is the minimum of 175 so instead of restoring 50 durability per 25 percent of a weapon cleaning kit you can restore 98.75 durability per 25 percent instead in this case but in all cases it can be almost double the amount so you can double the effectiveness of weapon cleaning kits if you're clever. This is made easier because we now have the shots to ruin numbers for each of the weapons in Daisy, so pro players can count the number of shots they've fired. Unfortunately though, you won't be able to see the durability of the weapon like I can, but in repairing a weapon, you know for a fact that it must be at one of the quality levels. Whichever quality level it is bumped up to, this is how many shots you have left, with this method working for suppressors and compensators too. Now if you combine counting shots with using weapons that destroy suppressors slower, you can basically quadruple how long your AK suppressor will last from the info in this video and using the info found on the website. In the case of the AK-74, you can more than quadruple how long your AK suppressor will work, but you'd have to sacrifice some damage for that, or you can nearly double how long all of your weapons will last in DZ. Now due to how this repair method isn't exactly realistic, it is a bit controversial, so I ask you, should the weapon repair system work in this way? Will you be counting shots from now on to make the most of those precious repair kits? And will you be firing the flare gun 7,200 times for the lulls? Let me and others know below. You'll also find the links below to the tables that I've used in this video and the new shots to ruin stat on the website, which I'll keep up to date for you guys. So from now on, we will know exactly how many shots it takes to ruin a suppressor with every single weapon. But before you go and thank me for the website, I certainly wouldn't have had the time to build the website without financial support. So if you use the website, do consider Consider supporting me on Patreon or dropping a donation. All support has varying levels of perks for you, so you're not just giving me money, you're getting stuff back. And it literally buys me hours to put into the development of the website. A huge thanks to all those that have supported me so far and made the website what it is today. You make my content possible, my videos, everything. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a good day.